Okay, in this video, we are gonna take a look at the integral from zero to pi over two, one over three plus two sine x plus cosine x dx. Uh, you look at this type of problem and you think like, what am I ever gonna do? Well, it turns out we can make some substitutions for sine and cosine and turn this into a problem we can do. Um, so there's two things that we need to know first. Uh, the first one is we need the double angle formula for sine. So sine of two x is two sine x cosine x. Now, why are we doing this? We're gonna do some trig manipulations here. I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom of this thing by cosine squared. So I have times cosine squared over cosine squared. That's just one. It's a weird looking version of one, but that's okay. I'm now gonna take the cosine squared in the denominator and make it cosine times cosine and turn that into the denominator of sine and cosine. So that'll look like this. So I took that cosine squared from the denominator. I made it sine over cosine. I made it cosine over cosine. And then I have a cosine squared left over. I am going to make that um, two, and then sine over cosine is tangent. Cosine over cosine is definitely just one. I'm gonna make this over one. And the reason I'm doing that is I actually wanna take the reciprocal of that, um, or I just, well, not really. I just wanna take the cosine squared and move it into the denominator as secant squared. So I'm gonna make this one over secant squared, which is exactly the same as cosine squared. Now, the reason I wanna do that is that secant squared is the same as one plus tan squared. And that's where I'm headed with this. So I will replace secant squared with one plus tan squared. This is a useful thing to remember that you can turn um, sine of two x into this. Um, you use it frequently in these types of integral or antiderivative problems. All right, the second thing we need to deal with is cosine of two x. So same idea. There are three choices for cosine of two x. We're gonna choose cosine squared minus sine squared because we know where we're going. We're gonna do the same thing. Multiply the top and the bottom by cosine squared over cosine squared and then do basically the same thing, except in this case, um, I have to distribute the one over cosine squared. So each of cosine squared and sine squared get a cosine squared in the denominator. That will look like this. Um, cosine squared over cosine squared is gonna be one. And then uh, sine over cosine is tangent, so we get tan squared. And then same thing, make this over one, bring the cosine squared to the denominator as one over secant squared. And we're gonna do literally the same thing. Secant squared is one plus tan squared. So this is going to give us ultimately one minus tan squared over one plus tan squared. So remember, we're trying to integrate something that has sine and cos a sum of sine and cosine in the denominator. This technique will definitely work for us, but we only have sine and cosine. We don't have sine of two x and cosine of two x. So just in each of these formulas, replace every x that you see with x over two. That will give us sine of x is two tan of x over two over one plus tan squared of x over two, and cosine is one minus tan squared of x over two over one plus tan squared of x over two. I will be honest with you, when I do these problems, I frequently forget, for whatever reason, in the denominator to make it x over two. I often try to do it with just x, and then I flounder around for a very long time. All right, keep those in mind. We're gonna go back to our original integral, and we will replace sine with two tan of x over two over one plus tan squared of x over two, and we will replace cosine with one minus tan squared of x over two over one plus tan squared of x over two. That's our step. So we've done that. The next step is to get a common denominator within the denominator, right? We have a complex fraction. Um, so the common denominator is gonna be one plus tan squared of x over two. I'm just, it's a com you have one over a complex, you have one over a fraction. So I'm gonna take the denominator and put in the numerator, which puts the one plus tan squared of x over two that is the common denominator in the denominator into the numerator. So this is the denominator of the denominator. That's where that came from. I didn't wanna write it out, it's so much writing. And then uh, we're getting a common denominator, right? So one plus tan squared x over two is that denominator. Three needs to be multiplied top and bottom by one plus tan squared x over two. So you'll get three quantity one plus tan squared x over two. For the next part of this, um, that we have going on. We're gonna have two times two tan of x over two. So four tan of x over two. And then uh, we'll just have that one minus tan squared of x over two. And then our dx. Okay, so it doesn't really feel like it's getting anywhere, but it is. Uh, so we still have this. One plus tan squared is secant squared. So that's come up multiple times now. So we have secant squared of x over two. In the denominator, I'm just gonna like distribute and collect like terms. Uh, I will end up with four because there's a three and a one. Uh, and then we have a four tan of x over two. That has no other like terms. 
Then we have a 3 tan squared minus 1 tan squared gives us 2 tan squared of x over 2. All right, we're getting somewhere. May not feel like it, but we definitely are. So this is our integral. Uh, everything in the denominator has a 2 with it, so I'm going to just take out 1 half. And, um, you know, that's all I'm going to do with this step. So this is still here. And then we have 2 plus 2 tan x over 2 plus tan squared of x over 2. All right, at this point, you have to, like, start feeling your way through the problem. Does this look like something you've seen before? Kind of does. Uh, the denominator is um, almost a perfect square, but it's one more than a perfect square. So I'm going to take that 2 and make it 1 plus 1. I'm also going to take the 1 half and move it back inside because I think I'm going to end up making u equal tan of x over 2. So by the chain rule, there should be a 1 half in front of that secant squared. Uh, so the 1 half is coming back inside as a coefficient. And then the denominator, I'm just going to make into 1 plus 1 plus 2 tan of x over 2 plus tan squared. The reason I'm doing that is 1 plus 2 tan of x over 2 plus tan squared of x over 2 is a perfect square trinomial. So I've effectively completed the square in the denominator. Um, let's just write it down. We get this. This is kind of perfect because we're, we're definitely headed toward an arctan at this point. All right, so here's where we are. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm saying that u is equal to tan of x over 2 plus 1, and then that'll make du 1 half secant squared of x over 2 dx. This is actually perfect arctan, right? So instead of doing the substitution and changing the bounds, I'm just going to integrate it, right? So this will give me the arctan of u. So I'm getting arctan of tan of x over 2 plus 1 from 0 to pi over 2. And now it's just fundamental theorem. I mean, you still have to remember some values of tangent uh, and a value of arctan. But when we plug in pi over 2, we're going to get arctan tan of pi over 4 plus 1. And then minus, when we plug in 0, we get arctan of tan of 0 plus 1. So the tan of pi over 4 is 1. So this will become the arctan of 1 plus 1, the arctan of 2. And then the tangent of 0 is 0, so that's just the arctan of 1. And then the arctan of 1 is pi over 4. So our final answer is going to be tan inverse of 2 and then minus pi over 4. There you go. This is a really useful substitution when you have just sine and just cosine and you have no idea what to do. Sometimes uh, making it look a little uglier with all these tan of x over 2s can make the problem a lot easier to do. All right, I hope this was helpful, and good luck.